Um, so my name is Jean-Manuel Becker, but it's just far too hard to pronounce, so everybody call me JM. Hopefully you can understand my accent. I, I immigrated 22 years ago, but I still have the accent here, here with me. So we're going to talk about something which kind of sounds boring, but when you look at security and what happened at Capital One, it's a good example. Uh, maybe we want to be more conscious as Australian, what, what protected means. Um, so when I saw that, that news, uh, and it was in January, I said, yeah, whatever, yeah, protected and other kind of certification. Uh, but uh, when you look at, at it and then when you dig deeper, you can understand that how is it important for us to have uh, the proper government using a proper design, proper landing zone, proper encryption. So what does that mean exactly? Oh, that doesn't work. Yeah, it does. Um, so I, I did a sh short message uh, for our internal people where I work because, um, you know, protected doesn't mean much. Um, so you can now securely classify information rated as protected inside the AWS Sydney. That's pretty cool. Um, what it was before, what is it now? So we're going to go dig deeper to understand uh, what it means. But um, projected is, is pretty high up in the, in the chain of the classification of data, and that's the highest classification a cloud provider can have here in Australia. So it's an Australian certification. And what has been certified is the AWS Sydney only. So you cannot so protected data obviously out of the country. Um, so it kind of changed everything for the public sector. Before they were saying, oh yeah, we are protected data, there is sensitive information in there, we cannot put them to the cloud. Now that's the last kind of uh, hurdle uh, removed from them to be able to migrate to the cloud. And there is a lot of push from the public government to, to migrate information to, to a public cloud. Yes? This way. Um, who gave the certification? So. Um, as CSC, part of ISD, use our processes to assess the Sydney region and classify as protected. Well, thanks, not, not very helpful. Who, who are they? Um, who is all these groups and we, we had never heard before if you don't work in the really public sector? And what exactly is protected? So we need to understand who is ISD first. And ISD um, can be anything, right? Uh, it's like an ad, or ah, I, you, I can regrow your hair on your head, we are certified experts who can do that for you. Well, um, actually ISD is really the real deal. That was uh, joined together several forces, um, I think it's Navy and, and, um, and Air Force during the World War II, they created the ISD and then that evolved into now more cyber security protection for, for us Australians. So when you look at the ISD, this Australian signal directorate. That doesn't mean much either. But when you look at who is member of the same group, there is ASIO, uh, National Intelligence, Secret Service, IFP. Uh, that's the real deal, right? It's not uh, the Australian government not going to use these people uh, to give us a false certification or false uh, information. Um, so the ISD um, certified that uh, AWS Sydney can host protected data. So how did that work? Um, they use RAP, which is some registered assessors um, who are organized by the ISD. So this, it, you can become an assessor if you want, but you need to be certified. You need to have all sort of uh, um, uh, classification and a study on, on your, on your um, past uh, to be able to certify that and do assessment for the different environments. So our processor can provide assessment up to the top secret level. So it, it's pretty up there um, as a type of uh, certification it has been released to AWS. Um, protected, what does it mean? Um, so there is a lot of classification and I'll go to detail just after this slide. Uh, what is protected? Uh, protected means high business impact, damage to the nation, interest, an organization or an individual. Um, if that data is exposed or uh, confis uh, sorry, exposed, I'll say it like this. Um, so as an individual, I look at you know, my credit card number, maybe my date of birth, my Medicare numbers, all of that for me is really protected. So uh, I would expect that if this data is stored in the cloud, then people will do due diligence to have proper IAM rules, proper WAF, proper security, proper encryption to be able to do it. So even if that's really the project is, is a, a public sector type of classification, I think it's important to even apply that inside the private sector to protect this, this information. 
So what is projected? So like I said before, it's pretty high up in the, in the chain. Um, we have the damage to the nation. I don't know, is that going to work? No, it doesn't. Um, damage to the nation. Um, and it's just before secret and top secret. So with secret and top secret, it, it's the, the highest in the government uh, here in Australia. And then all the rest um, as an official, official, and sensitive um, the, the different classification for data. So when um, a government sends an email to someone, uh, they need to enter a certain codification uh, to be able to send this email and then write that information through the different uh, classification here. So um, we're going to see it next. Um, LBS achieved protected, but who, who else can do protected? So there is not many cloud or real cloud who can do it. Uh, so AWS can do it since January. Microsoft and Office 365 um, and Azure can do it since April last year. So a bit of head start for Microsoft in that part to, uh, well, I can't do anything about it. <laughs> um, and I think it was a big push to have Office 365 available for government uh, environment so they can do protected. Um, the other cloud, as I consider as cloud, Google, they cannot do protected right now. It's just an unclassified DLM, and I will explain what DLM is. And IBM Bluemix as well, they can't host data, despite they win a lot of government uh, contract. Um, then other type of provider, dimension data, micro government, they're all in camera, you know, traditional uh, data centers. They call themselves cloud, but yeah. It's kind of VMware stuff in the back end. It's not really a cloud. Um, so really, AWS and Azure, the two one who can host protected data. So what is unclassified DLM? So DLM is a, uh, it's a marker. So it's dissemination marker. So it's to protect that data. We're going to put a marker on it, say this is protected, or this is government, or this is personal. That way people can forward it to another person, another person. So that, that's the, the type of, of data. So for Google Cloud, for example, they can host government data, but this data need to be unclassified. So it's the kind of damage nation, damage an individual, damage an organization. So it's, a, it's a just normal data. So. That's a list, and then that's very important for AWS to be on that list, so they work very hard to get that certification. The uh, service who can be used, uh, unfortunately, we can't use all the services that would be cool inside the Sydney region. Uh, only for, 42 of them are rated as protected, so they can host protected data or compute protected data or backup or store protected data. Um, but we have the main services uh, who are uh, useful for us, all the compute, and um, we're going to talk about in detail. All the serverless, so API Gateway, Lambda, all of that is certified, it's pretty cool. Storage, obviously, you have S3, you have EBS, uh, network, some database, um, all the security, they recommend really to use all the security features in AWS, config, and, and the rest. Uh, some big data stuff with Redshift, and EMR, but no ML and no AI service yet. So you can't really do ML yet on, on that, that space. So in more in detail with all the services, so yeah, mobile API gateway on the left and with all the Lambda. So you can do really the core type of services you want to use. Um, you have SQS, you have SNS, uh, you have even directory services here. Uh, with, with AD, uh, obviously KMS, all the IM, Cloud HSM, um, and uh, Step Function we talk about today, and EMR and Redshift. So you can really almost do a, a bit of everything. And then Workspace, um, if you want really to secure your environment into one uh, AWS. Yep? Question. Is it a, it's a bit of a question. Um, is it possible to configure some of these services so they are not protected and then So you want to stop people using certain services? No, no, I'm just thinking, so, so the, I'm guessing that the default way that these services are configured, they, they have this particular level, uh, they, they can hold this particular data, and then they can use the services. Um, is it possible to turn off protections within those services um, to, I guess, if we had to reassess that they wouldn't apply? We're going to talk about in detail what it means to be protected, because that's AWS is protected, right? That's not you, you still need to have another RWAP assessor to monitor and assess your application running inside the as assessment 
of AWS itself. So we, 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 I'll talk about it in a couple of slides. So these 42 services, that's the one you can use, but you need to use it in a certain way. And then if you saw the slide before, uh, there was a little asterisk there for all uh, the cloud provider. And if you read at the end, must configure in line with the guidance. So it's a bit like PCI, right? You, AWS is PCI compliant, but that's AWS data center location, servers, racks, keys, access, and stuff like that. If you want to put a PCI application in there, that's your responsibility. So we talk about it. Uh, so these 42 services, you can do almost the core of what you need to do inside the AWS space, uh, but no ML. Um, AWS, before being protected, um, were obviously holding the unclassified DLM certification as well. And there was four other services that you could use. So there was 46 services at the time. Um, obviously, AWS organization, it's um, uh, unclassified DLM. So you are allowed to use these four services, Trusted Advisor, Route 53, and Shield, to help you to do a protected environment, but not these services cannot host protected data. So obviously you're not going to put data in AWS organization, but you want to use AWS organization to be able to do your billing, your service control policies, and we're going to talk about it uh, uh, there uh, after. Uh, trusted advisor to be able to do your auditing and stuff like that. So these four other services can be used as well in the public sector, but they cannot host or hold protected data. So AWS organization, um, for people who know, you can organize your account in OUs, and then inside this OU, you can use service control policies. So there is a lot of recommendation to, when you set up an account, we're going to host protected data, that you're going to limit your, the service you can use inside that account to these 42 services. That way you will block anybody to be able to set up services who are not uh, rated protected. So the condition we mentioned, I mentioned before, they must configure in line with the guidelines uh, and certification report of consumer guide. So there is a lot of stuff to read, and uh, I'll come in detail there. So uh, my point is, do you remember the share responsibility model, right? It's not because AWS is protected that you were going to be able to put your workload in there, everything is working, yeah, I can put my data, and I'm all good. You're not. So protected model. Um, AWS is responsible for the security on the cloud, of the cloud, sorry, uh, which is, you know, the data center, the access, the, uh, the way they operate, the, the way they destroy the disk, the way they host the, uh, the different racks, uh, the, the power, the edge location, the networking, the database, if they host RDS, the way they do RDS management and stuff like that. But obviously you are responsible for your file system, your operating system, hardening, uh, your data, your encryption. If you don't do encryption into a platform which is rated as protected, you are not following the protected guidance. So that is very important, right? So that's your responsibility still. And again, that's your responsibility to, once you migrated an app, that you have the our app assessor again to assess your application and write your application as protected as well before you can put real data in it. So what does that look like? And that has been released by AWS um, inside the artifact zone. So if you know the artifact, you can go to the Amazon AWS artifact. But if you look inside your console, you have an artifact service as well that you can download PDF with all the different assessment uh, AWS has been uh, gone through and then the different documentation you need to follow to be able to gain this type of, uh, of certification. So there is an RWAP one. And inside the ARAP one, there is a series of PDF that you're going to download and you're going to be able to see all the recommendations on how to set up VPCs, how to set up SCP. So there is a lot of work that has been done by AWS. That's an AWS design um, to help government to be able to migrate. But there is a lot of condition with it. So if you have a quick look at it, uh, they are on-prem. They have uh, MFA on-prem. So not really uh, using any of the SSO service or anything like that. They use Direct Connect but they need to do VPN IPsec on top of Direct Connect, so you can't use the Direct Connect as itself as it's not encrypted. So if you want to have any type of data traversing that, that pipe, you need to use VPN. There is not one internet gateway in there, so no internet facing at all. There is no NAT gateways either, so all the traffic needs to be routed through private links or back to on-prem through proxies or other things. So it's pretty restrictive. Otherwise, the design is pretty standard. You have 
kind of a, 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 an entrance uh, subnet. You have a EC2 subnet and a database subnet. And interestingly, they have a specific subnet for lambdas. So they can run lambda, but obviously lambda need to run in VPC with network interface, node face, internet facing, and all of that. Um, so pretty standard design, the three tier, and then a, a lambda subnet. And they recommend, obviously, to use minimum two uh, landing zone. So we're going to look in detail what's, what's inside the 11 points here uh, to, to see a, a bit what, what they use. But you know, normal stuff, network load balancer, a WAF on top with uh, the uh, ILB, and then security group isolating the traffic, uh, roles, standard kind of design, but um, some restriction. So you can read, yeah, cool. So I talk about Direct Connect, VPN on top, and then using HTTPS as well for every traffic encrypted. Um, use a WAF and security groups uh, to be able to protect your application uh, on the application load balancer. If you need to use DNS, they recommend to don't use RAT53, which is a bit interesting. Apparently, it was a problem with the logs of RAT53, who could expose some, some sensitive information. So RAT53 is not recommended to use in VPC. They recommend to use your own DNS. Uh, use KMS, obviously, for everything. Encrypt everything all the time. Like, uh, um, uh, like dense, like nobody is watching, and, and encrypt like everybody does, right? You, you know the, the term. Um, VPC security group control, control traffic using multi AZ, using MFA for admin access, kind of the standard stuff recommended by, by AWS anyway. Um, cloud wash logs and system log uh, done by um, uh, EC2 with agent using NLB uh, and ILB patterns. So you have an ILB to kind of load balance your application. You put an NLB with a private link if you need to share that with another agency or, or other environment. So again, no internet getaways, nothing public, everything through private links to connect accounts together. Um, separate subnet with knuckles. I recommend to use knuckles. Not a lot of people do, but you can really do a good job on knuckles to protect traffic in, traffic out. Um, and uh, obviously, minimum privilege with IM role. And we come back to what happened to Capital One. They had an IM role profile on the EC2 instance with S3 star. So and it was probably the uh, data lake was hacked because there was 700 bucket inside that account with parquet files. So that tells me that that looked like a, a data lake. And then someone do S3 LS, tack, 700 bucket. That, that must have been scary for the hacker, right? Oh shit, what I'm getting to. <laughs> so minimum privilege with IMO, please. Um, I saw uh, the same framework sometimes doesn't do a good job. Is give S3 star, Lambda star, Dynamo star. Please, please make an effort and then really define exactly the type of role you need for instance profile and Lambda profiles. Um, other type of um, protected here. Um, AWS config, obviously CloudTrail, um, uh, CloudWash, Shield, all the standard stuff you, you heard many times. So uh, you need to have CloudTrail on every account. You need to use config. You need to use Lambda for security. Um, and they have you here the SCSC government logging, which is another type of logging they need to go back to on-prem to do some logging on, on activities. And we have here the SCP I was mentioning before, where you're going to be able to uh, enforce the type of service who can be used in certain account or not through service control policies, which is much more granular now. So, um, in conclusion, uh, foundation design is not easy. Uh, I would recommend that you really you get some good help to be able to build this, this environment if you need to. Uh, there is a lot of things to go through. Usually for a normal enterprise, you will have the first one, multiple account design. You will have data encryption. You will have cl cloud adoption and well-architected framework. On top of that, you have the AWA protected uh, reference architecture, which is part of the document I've, I've, see, I've shown. And then the ISM protected control requirement as well. There's more than 38 of them with all sorts of uh, calcul um, uh, monitoring uh, uh, on logs, monitoring on activities, monitoring on um, on type of access you have. So uh, really a complex thing. So get, get some help to, to be able to build uh, a proper uh, environment protected because you don't want to fail 
your RWAP assessment when you migrate an application in it. And that's to protect all of us, really. Um, if uh, we, may, we have the health record or the Medicare record inside the, the cloud, we don't want uh, oops moment, uh, like at Capital One, to have people with IM all open and having our S3 data getting um, uh, leaked. So that's about protected. Thank you. If you have any questions, happy to take some, and then I've got some resources for you, so, some from ADS, uh, AWS, sorry, uh, and some from the Australian government that have gathered some information and some, some slides. I can share the slides as well. Yes, I think, Scott. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Do you think uh, AWS Security Hub will start to have standards against that protected? So in the ah. event that you're using like RDS encryption, but yep. it's uh, not customer managed keys that would start to flag issues. At the moment, Security Hub just uh, covers CIS. Yeah, the 100 uh, rules of CIS. Uh, I haven't heard anything. Maybe, Chris, I, I don't know um, if you can. No, no. Uh, uh, Security Hub, yeah, why not? Or we can build the own, your own rules and to be able to follow that and, and ensure that that environment is encrypted through uh, AWS config. Because Security Hub still use AWS config in the back end to execute the rules and monitor the rules and, and, and give that. So um, I hope so. We can, we can demand that feature. Yeah, sure. Please ask your account manager. <laughs> they will create a product feature request. Any other question on landing zone or design or? There you go. Um, can you explain the ACSC custom logging? Uh, oh, uh, that, that's a specific logging for government where they ship some logs, which I'm not sure which one. I'm not, you know, weighted at government NV1 or NV2, so uh, to a central agency where they do an analysis on logs. It's like a SOC for government. Okay, but only only used by uh, yes. federal government services. Yes, yes, okay. yes. It's like a SOC specific for, for the government. I don't know what they look at it in there. I'm not sure. Fair enough. Thanks. But you can do everything in the AWS native first and then uh, have S3 to be fed to, to that, that logging. I don't know if it is a massive Splunk or something they use. I don't know what they use in the back end. Yeah. Any other questions? No? All right, give it up for JM. Thank you.